You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. You guys, it's springtime. I am so excited to see all of my plant friends starting to pop up in the neighborhood. And I've been out exploring, saying hello and happy spring. And lately, I have been hanging out in the nettles patch, harvesting, eating, making beautiful medicine. So today's episode, I'm going to share with you what I know about nettles, at least what I can squeeze in about 30 minutes. So I hope you get a lot of value out of the show. I'll see you on the inside. Welcome to the Herbalist's Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there's an herbalist in every home. Again, with your host, clinical herbalist, Melissa Mutterspa. You guys, It's springtime and the sun is shining and all the flowers are coming out. And I don't know about you, but this makes me so excited beyond belief that I can't even express the amounts of joy I feel. Like I get to go out for my walks and not only is the beautiful sun shining down on me, but I'm seeing all of my favorite plant friends begin to emerge, whether it's like just the beautiful little violets on the side or the salmonberry flowers or the cottonwood buds raining down, which I've been doing a lot of things on cottonwood. If you haven't been able to check that out, I've got some new YouTube videos where I'm talking a lot about making medicine with cottonwood buds. Super, super fun and yummy, but anyways, I want to talk about some of my other favorite plants or one of my other favorite plants that is starting to pop up right now and it's stinging nettles and I know a lot of you out there are probably like ew nettles they sting me they hurt me why in the heck would I want to give any love and attention to this stinking stinging plant But here's the reality, my friends. Nettles are actually one of the most nutrient-dense plants we have to work with in our world. They can be used as food and medicine in so many ways. It's truly, truly beautiful. And it's actually one of the most widely used herbs in the herbal materia medica. And 
I mean, if you were to look back on a lot of the interviews I've done with other herbalists, a lot of them talk about if they had to choose one herb to use, it would be nettles. Of course, there's totally like other herbs that these people talk about too, but nettles definitely gets a mention a lot. So like, again, why in the heck would you want to harvest something so darn stingy? It's like begging for some pain in life or something like that. (laughs) But really, the truth is, it doesn't have to be so harsh. And hopefully throughout this podcast, I help you explore the idea of forming a really deep love for nettles and the incredible value this plant has to offer you and your body and our planet. One thing I love to do, I love to kind of brag or show off. Maybe that's not what it is, but um, I love to go out and show people how they can harvest nettles without getting stung. And you can totally use gloves if that's your jam, but I do it without gloves and it's a bit easier than you think. I just recently shot a YouTube video where you can see me out harvesting nettles with my bare hands and not using gloves because there's like, there's all these little hairs on the bottom of the nettle leaf that are filled with formic acid and other constituents as well, but that's where you get the nettle sting from. So if you were to grab the top of the leaf, you won't be as likely to get stung. Mind you, there are some some nettle leaves that do have some of those stinging hairs coming on the top leaf too, but I don't know. It's, it's a little also about just embracing that and the power that is in that lovely, lovely nourishing plant. Anyways, if you want to learn more or see it live in action, you can check out my YouTube channel for a video. I think it's like harvesting stinging nettles without gloves and not getting stung. Some kind of long title like that. But I will um, I will totally link to it in the show notes for you. And you'll also get a great example of why it's important to not look into the sun when recording videos because I definitely did that. My YouTube channel is new. I'm kind of a rookie of getting on film, but I know it's so important to like actually show you guys these plans more than just talk about them over and over and over. So if you do the YouTube thing, subscribe to my channel that will be linked below and soon I'll be able to get a really cool name that's not like YWZE9A58bro. <laughs> one of these days soon. Anyways, um, let's chat more about nettles and why in the heck you would want to even take the time to go out and harvest nettles because ow, right? Um, really again, nettles are one of the most nutritious plants we have out there. There is a ton of calcium in nettles. Like it's, really one of the highest in calcium of all the herbs and plants, which makes nettles really lovely to create like a mineral tonic. If you want lovely lustrous hair or strengthening your bones or skincare, even your nails as well. And there's another cool plant coming up right about now. It's horsetail and it's a really good compliment if you want to start using nettles for the healthy bones, um, hair, teeth nails, things like that. It's a lot to be mindful of when going out to gather these plants. And really, I'm going to iterate over and over again, the importance of being very aware of your surroundings and the health and condition of the other plants. You know, are you near industrial runoff or farm runoff? How how pure is the soils and the ground you're around? Because these plants do take up the toxins and, and stuff like that. But anyways, let's let's chat a little more about nettles and why they're so awesome. They're not only really rich in calcium, they are also super rich in silica, potassium, manganese, sulfur, vitamin A or beta carotene, and also chlorophyll. And it's, I think it's so funny to talk about the chlorophyll because when you eat fresh nettles, 
like straight from the plant, which I'll totally show you how to do in that YouTube video, um, you taste this amazing flavor of fresh chlorophyll rich nettles. And I know, I know most of us don't think, ooh, that tastes like chlorophyll. Mmm. <laughs> but when you eat fresh nettles, you're totally going to feel that. It's just like, oh, this is so nutritious. And mm, when I think about the thought of like, what would chlorophyll taste like? It's that. So it, watch my video if you want and, and learn how you can do that. Um, and it's just, it's delicious. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> They're also really rich in iron. And if you are dealing with anemia, you can utilize the nettles um, and their iron, which they're also really rich in vitamin C. And that's gonna just help your body to absorb the iron. You can also add some yellow dock with it. And that can be really, really helpful if you're dealing with anemia or low iron levels. Uh, oftentimes pregnant women can have low iron levels. That can be a really good combination. Of course, when I speak about what you can use herbs for, um, this is just for education. I am not here to prescribe to you or, or anything along those lines. So do work with your healthcare practitioner. Do work with a qualified herbalist. Do work with a naturopathic physician or whoever you need to work with. Um, I just want to teach you what I know about these plants. So yeah, nettles and its nutrient density. Um, it's not only got those epic minerals I was just talking about, it's also loaded in vitamins like A, C, and K. It's got glucosamine. It's really, really fiber rich. Um, and nettles has a ton of protein for a plant, like way more than most of the plants out there. So if you are somebody who is vegan, for instance, and you're wondering how you can get a really good source of protein into your body, start getting those nettles on board. It's really, really amazing. I wanted to take a quick pause to show some love and gratitude to our sponsors of the Herbalist Path podcast who make this show possible for me and possible for you too. So here it goes. Medicinal mushrooms are all the rage these days, if you didn't know already. And with great reason, because they are powerful medicine that can improve your health and your life in so many different ways when they're well-made. Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of stuff on the market that isn't going to be so effective. And that's why you need to find a brand that you can actually trust. For me, that brand is Whole Sun Wellness. And this is the creation of a brilliant woman and fellow mama, Jamie Bonfiglio. She's an international mushroom educator that has been working in the medicinal mushroom industry for years. And this is when she saw firsthand how many other companies take shortcuts when it comes to their products. And Jamie wasn't having it. She set out to build her company the right way. Whole Sun Wellness is here to raise the industry standards so those crap mushrooms on the market aren't getting into your body or your family's body. Whole Sun Wellness is the first company to test and report nutritional facts for all of their extracts. They go beyond industry standards every step of the way, from sourcing to extraction and final testing. And as the owners of the largest medicinal mushroom farm in the United States, Whole Sun Wellness is taking control of their supply chain for the highest quality and absolute full transparency. They're even the first company to include pure mycelium extract in every single product. So when you're thinking of getting medicinal mushrooms for you and your family, Whole Sun Wellness is exactly the ones you want. Also, be sure to check out their new Mycolites. These are the world's first dissolvable electrolyte tablets. They're featuring functional mushroom extracts that'll give you more energy, more stamina, and recovery as well. And who couldn't use all of that? 
The other thing is they are these adorable little mushroom shaped tablets and they come in like a little Altoids box, but way cooler than Altoids because they're mycolites. Anyways, head to wholesunwellness.com to grab yourself some mycolites and all of the other functional medicinal mushrooms that you and your family need. And of course, you can grab that link right here in the show notes now. And I love nettles being a woman. Nettles are amazing for ladies. Um, Of course, it's got the nutrient density and the ability to help you with luxurious hair and nails and teeth and all that good stuff. But also if you're a woman who maybe you suffer from heavy bleeding during menstruation or you bleed for long periods of time, nettles is a really good astringent and it can be really, really helpful for you uh, for hemorrhaging or uterine hemorrhaging. Um, It's a really nutrient dense plant for pregnant mothers. Again, it's really fantastic for nursing mothers. It can do a great job of helping you to produce more more milk if you are lacking in that department as it helps produce more milk it's also going to nourish your body and bring a lot more of those vitamins and minerals into your body and into your baby's body which is really really important because if you are nursing or you have been through pregnancy you probably understand how that's a really really hard job physically emotionally spiritually all of the ways and having such a really supportive and nutrient dense plant on your side can just be amazing. So I actually use the nettles in a few of my tea formulations specific for moms, like my mommy to be is a nourishing pregnancy support blend. Like not only is it nourishing, it also supports the nervous system and it's really tasty because if it's not tasty, then you're not going to drink it. And, and I want you to be able to take those things into your body and feel good about it, you know, not just be overwhelmed with like, Oh my God, this natural stuff is so gross. Um, I use the nettles in my Milk Ladies blend, which is a blend specific for nursing mothers. It helps to calm their nerves, nourish their body, and just promote the letdown reflex. And funny little side note story on the name of that tea. It's called the Milk Ladies blend because My mother is pretty short. She's got dark hair. She's got dark skin. She's absolutely beautiful. I am not short. I had, well, my hair's darker in older age, but when I was younger, my hair was very blonde or strawberry blonde, and I'm a pale, white, pink-skinned person. And my mom would always say that I came from the milk lady instead of the milkman. So, I don't know. It's kind of an old joke, joke from long ago, but... That's how that tea name came about. Um, I also use the nettles in the Peaceful Baby Blend, which is really awesome for kiddos if they've got tummy upset or are dealing with colic or to help them calm and soothe their nerves during like terrible twos or just to like get some peace and calm. It's also got some herbs in there that help to fight off viral infections and calm and soothe the kiddo. So like if your kiddos are, um, are suffering from some type of illness, but they're still trying to bounce off the walls, like their body needs rest during that time. So this blend helps nourish the body and to help those kids fight off the illness and to chillax. You know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of, kind of fun to put those formulas together and that kind of thing. But yeah, anyways, I also use the nettles in the wonderful woman's tea, which is a really, really great hormonal balancing blend for women who maybe aren't in the nursing phases, but basically from, you know, if you're dealing with terrible PMS issues, or sometimes you get a little bit more crazy than other times and you just need to nourish your body and support your nervous system. And, you know, a lot of women dealing with hot flashes swear by this tea. And the truth is there's nettles in that blend and they really help to support us ladies. Anyways, 
Um, enough about those teas. I just wanted you to know that they're, they do contain nettles and that is why. Um, you can also use the, the seeds of nettles. So oftentimes I am using the leaves in most of my formulas, but the seeds can be a really great um, chopper restorative when it comes to your kidneys and your adrenals. And so it can be a really, really great help if you just need to renew your vigor or sense of energy in life. If you're dealing with adrenal burnout or you're just, just one of those people that you're constantly feeling burnt out, or you just wish you could get more done in your days, you might really want to turn to nettles. They could be a really, really great helper for you. And not only nourish your body, but just support the adrenals. You can drink them in a really strong tea. You can eat them in your meals. And it's just going to do a wonderful job of giving you this feeling of increased energy, clarity, vibrance, and health. And who doesn't want more of that, right? So you can also use the nettles if you are somebody dealing with inflammation. So there's a lot of magnesium and some of the other nutrients in the nettles are really helpful when it's um, inflammation in particular to musculoskeletal pain. And it's even said, <laughs> this one's kind of fun for you brave people, but if you take the time to sting yourself with the nettles, let's say, let's backtrack a little bit. Maybe you're somebody who is dealing with chronic joint pain and inflammation. Maybe it's an old injury or something along those lines, maybe arthritis. You can be brave and you can sting yourself repeatedly with the nettles. You're going to suffer from the effects of the sting for two to eight hours, whatever it may be. But there is evidence that the chronic pain will subside afterwards. So apparently it has something to do with restoring the communication between your nerves and the nettle's ability to help repair old injuries. And again, you might be a really, really brave person to try this, but I also challenge you to weigh the potential benefits versus the cost, you know, the, the costs and benefits kind of here um, and trying it for yourself. And if you do and you find that you get great results, reach out to me, let me know. If you do it and you don't get great results and you just hate me for recommending this to you, don't tell me. No, no, you can totally tell me that too. It, it's, it's fine. Um, I love hearing those kinds of things. So. Yeah, yet another great way that nettles are so incredibly powerful. And uh, one of the women that works with me, Tanya, she suffers from seasonal allergies. Do you? I know there's so many of you that do. And what you can do is use nettles. So um, there's histamine in nettles, and it alters the histamine response in your body. So it's going to be really, really helpful in easing your seasonal allergies. And the best thing, ideally, you can start drinking a really strong nettle tea on the daily a couple of months before you know allergy season is about to spring up. And then your body is just going to have a, a greater ability to deal with those allergies. But if you forgot, or you're just like, I don't have nettle tea two months before allergy season, or you, you know, it's just not on your mind because it's really good to like put things that suck out of our minds, right? Um, you can try using a really good quality freeze dried nettles. So that might be a little more helpful in dealing with the acute symptoms of your allergies, whether that's the runny nose, sniffly, sneeziness, the watery eyes, um, freeze dried nettles can be a really, really great helper during that time. A couple of companies out of Oregon, I really love that have an excellent quality freeze dried nettles. There's Eclectic Institute. They're out of Sandy, Oregon. Um, and Oregon's Wild Harvest, which was in Sandy, right down the road from me, but now they're in Central Oregon. Anyways, both of these companies make really, really great quality freeze-dried nettles. So if that's something you are now on the hunt for because you're sick of crying over nothing but allergies, um, I highly recommend checking them out. I don't make any money from them or anything like that. I just... I think they're great quality and I want you to start using really great quality herbs in your life so that you 
can foster a deep respect for the power of using these plants as medicine and empowering yourself to do that. And then, you know, ultimately my dream is that it helps you want to take greater care of our planet by taking greater care of yourself. That's my big dream and all that I do. Anyways, um, let's talk a little bit more about nettles and how it can be really helpful in the treatment of eczema. Uh, really helpful for adults and children both, but it's particularly beneficial in children who are dealing with like eczema that comes about maybe because they're really nervous or something along those lines. Getting some nettles on board with those kiddos is a really, really good way to go. And it can even be really helpful externally, like maybe as a poultice or something, um, if they have very oozy or weepy eczema sores because nettles is a really great astringent. Um, so that could be really, really helpful. So an astringent just helps to tone and tighten tissues. And if you've got weepy, pussy eczema sores, that can be really helpful there. Um, there's also lots of research about nettles being really helpful for lowering blood sugar for people that are dealing with type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. It's a really good idea to get nettles on board there. Um, you know, honestly, I could talk about the medicinal value of nettles for the remainder of my life. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to but I'm not going to put it all into this podcast episode <laughs> because I want you to stick around and, you know, listen to more and not hear me just talk about nettles for the rest of my life. Um, I love nettles. I use it not only in those like women's health teas, I use it in my immunity for that histamine um, response and the nutritional value in it. I use it in the where is my mind for those that um, need that vigor and clarity and sense of energy. You can totally try it in any of my tea blends. I'll link to all of them that I use nettles in, in my show notes. Um, and if you want to try them, you can get 15% off of them when you use the code THP15. So the herbalist path 15. Um, those are all my mountain Mel's teas that use nettles. They're freaking awesome. I'm, I'm maybe biased, but no, they're really, really great teas. Um, but even beyond trying my Mountain Mel's teas, what is even more empowering for you is to go out, form a relationship with this plant, spend some time in nature, get connected, and find a place where you can sustainably harvest your own nettles. It's worth it. It's such an empowering feeling. It's really, really beautiful. Like it, it brings me such an amazing sense of joy. Even just walking amongst the nettles patches near me, it's really lovely. Um, and knowing that I can walk amongst these patches and it's not that I necessarily have to like take them all, you know, because I, I do want to talk about that a, a quite a bit. Like if you are going to choose the option to gather your own nettles, there's quite a few things to keep in mind when harvesting them or for this matter, any other plant that it's really important to do your harvesting in a way that will ensure more of that amazing plant to come for future generations. So Always be really mindful when you're out harvesting and never take more than a quarter of the stand. Particularly with nettles, um, there are actually many butterflies that rely on nettles for nesting and growing their babies. They like to lay their eggs, their little larvae, hang out in the tips of the newer nettle leaves. And they need those homes because I don't know about you, but I love butterflies and their little larvae. And I want them to come back just as much as I want those plants to come back. So while I may go out and harvest nettles, I am always leaving plenty for those butterflies to nest in and also being very mindful and attentive to the plant because you'll you'll often see little pieces of the plant that have been eaten away it's kind of a sign that you might have a plant that somebody is nesting in and that's not the one you want to harvest let those butterflies do their thing you know we're all little caterpillars turning into beautiful butterflies right 
Um, and we need that. We need that. So also uh, keep in mind when you're harvesting, like right now in my area is a great time to go out and harvest these spring nettles. None of them are like even more than a foot tall. So I go out and I harvest and I snip them at an angle right at the node that is above the last set of leaves you're not going to harvest. So you snip and then right under where you snip, there's still leaves left on that plant. And that's going to allow them to grow back throughout the summer and ultimately be able to provide nesting for those beautiful butterflies. Which again, super, super important that we care for the other beings as we care for ourselves, as we care for these plants and our beautiful planet. So yeah, um, other things to be really mindful of when you're harvesting nettles and anything else, just, I think I mentioned this earlier, but it's, it's so important that you are sure to not harvest near any farm waste or runoff or industrial waste or runoff. Nettles particularly does a really fantastic job of taking up the toxic bunches of junk into the plant. And you don't want that. You don't want to be ingesting industrial waste and runoff. So really pay attention to where you choose to gather. If you have the opportunity to go out into a place with beautiful nutrient dense soils that you know doesn't have any harsh pesticides or herbicides or things like that around it, that's where you want to go, you know, versus the slew in your city neighborhood. Um, so really be mindful of that. Again, I do have a video on YouTube showing you how to sustainably harvest nettles and how to never stare into the sun again when talking on video. <laughs> um, I also, in that video, I show you how I eat a fresh nettle leaf right in the middle of the patch, which is pretty, pretty cool. And on another note, you guys, I am about to start a new, very exciting kind of club. It's going to be the wild and crafty club. And the reality is that I love, 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 love teaching people about using plants as medicine, right? But it also is so important to teach about the sustainability and the ethics and some of the history and the culture behind plants and not just the medicinal value and, and how to create a relationship with these plants, because that's really what it takes. You know, I mean, most of the plants I've ever harvested in my life, I've been back to visit like hundreds of times before I even harvested them once. There's, there's just never ending info to learn about. So I'm starting a new club. It's called Wild and Crafty and it hasn't quite started yet, but it's going to soon and I'm super excited about it. We're going to go pretty in depth on one, maybe two plants. Um, it's very new, so if you want to jump on board with me, I'm going to be doing like a, a founding members opening where you can help me create what's going to be really valuable for you to learn. Um, I'm going to do a waitlist sign up for you guys, and I will do that in the show notes, but it's www.theherbalistpath.com backslash wild underscore plus underscore crafty underscore membership, underscore waitlist, underscore sign up. That's really long. Don't worry. It's linked in the show notes. Um, this is going to be your chance to kind of get on, on the ground level of this new and exciting little club and, you know, deepen your relationship with these plants, deepen your relationship with yourself, deepen your relationship with nature and learn really killer things about using plants as medicine in a sustainable, healthy, and beautiful way. It's going to be fun. And I hope that you join me. Also, if you want, if you head over to theherbalistpath.com, I have a new guide for you. It's all about 10 of my favorite medicinal herbal plants. I like to grow in my garden and I share with you a recipe for each one of them and like why you would want to grow it, what it can do for you. And it's a pretty cool guide. Anyways, 
Speaking of cool things, it's spring. It's time for me to go outside and explore the beauties and joys of nature and smile at all my plant friends as they start coming up. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. I hope you now love nettles and you're ready to embrace the sting if that's what you must do. And if you love this episode, please share it with your friends because together, you and I can make herbalism Hashtag spread like wildflowers. See y'all soon. This has been the Herbalist's Path. Thanks for joining us. Have we piqued your herb curiosity? Are you thirsty for more? Well, then check out the show notes of today's episode for exciting educational opportunities, workshops, and courses. If you'd like to support our mission, please subscribe, rate, and review to help others find us. Together, we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. Wishing you all a lovely day. Bye for now. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Ella Campaign to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.